we'll have a look at what Anthony Burgess had to say about Robert Graves. But before we do that, check out this clip of Graves explaining why he just had to clear out of England and move to Dare. Apparently it was the ribbon development that became absolutely tolerable to him. The springing up of multiple little semis all over England. The vulgarity of it became absolutely unendurable. And he just had to leave. Goodbye to all that. What was the all that? Well, I was clearly out of England at the time. Uh, but, um, there were too many houses. And they were, they were, they'd started what's, what was called ribbon building. So you didn't see the, as you drove through the country, you didn't see the country, you only saw little houses. And this got on my mind, and uh, mm. so I decided to, uh, first of all, I thought of going to, to, to France and then elsewhere, but I finally hit on Majorca. And, but um, I cleared out. Here is the villa in Dea to which Graves decamped. There is no ribbon building to besmirch the vista. It stands alone majestically, the place where the poet and artist can produce his works. This is what Anthony Burgess had to say. This is Burgess's verdict on Graves. Puerile dismissal of most of his contemporaries. There is something immoral in the spectacle of a grown man corrupting a youth with his own prejudices. The Magus of Mallorca would have done well to apply to his own work the informed rigour he brought to that of others, for Graves' importance as a poet still seems to be in doubt. There is not one line of his that has become a common quotation. Graves does not hug the memory. He seems rhythmically flaccid and has never quite come to terms with the movement of spoken English. His diction has a tendency to obsolete inversion. Never was a literary life so loftily dedicated, but perhaps dedication is not enough. Nancy Nicholson was bossy. People felt sorry for Graves. Graves was in fact pussy whipped. Pussy whipped is the right word, I think. It's, it's, the word seems appropriate. Pussy whipped. Laura Riding was egotistical and dogmatic. I remember her giving in Manchester a 15-minute lecture on the nature of poetry and refusing discussion, since she alone knew the meaning of words. Graves loved Laura Riding, but was denied access to her bed he put up meekly with her tyranny. Graves' late strange adventures with young women in Dea are not to be interpreted as senile lechery. It is consoling to read that he has suffered financially, maintaining an innocent trust in sharks a contractual screwing ensured that he got no money out of I Claudius. Graves' translation of the Rubaiyat typified inveterate qualities, arrogance, innocence, unscholarliness, and a disturbing incompetence. Graves, knowing no Persian, produced a very dry paraphrase that 
imitation of poetic taste. Graves' great quality is innocence expressed to the world as bumptiousness and indiscretion.